Okay, so everybody got? Yes, and, and do make sure you throw your trash away, not in the floor. All right, let's see if we can get the, the picture of the wave up here. All right, this is a pretty cool looking wave, isn't it? All right. Now here's the deal, waves are very powerful and they travel long distances. Um, but you know, they're just the upper part of the ocean. You know, it's not, you know, if you're down underneath the water, you may not know that anything's going on. But here's the deal, the way this relates to us today, a wave may begin out in the middle of the ocean but it affects the land. Today we're supposed to, we're talking about being world changers. All right? Now, you probably are not going to get to go to every country in the world to tell people about Jesus. But you can go to the people around you. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today, and we're going to talk about a guy who went to several countries and who shared the gospel with people. Um, well, actually, we're going to talk about Paul today, okay? And in the book of Acts, yeah, I think even y'all talked about him in study school today, didn't you? All right, well, we're going to keep talking about Paul. Um, in the book of Acts, it talks about a lot of the things he did. Uh, he did a lot of traveling on boats to different countries, and today we're going to look at one of those boat trips that he took, Okay? Um, he was in prison for telling people about Jesus. And they were on the way to taking him to Rome. Okay? So, eventually, he's going to get to Rome. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through Acts chapter 27. But I need someone to play Paul today. And I have already enlisted someone. So... Ethan is going to be Paul for us today. Are you sure? He looks nothing like a Paul. So, alright. Alright, so this is Paul today. Alright? So, here, here's your instructions. You have simple instructions. Just stand here with me while we talk about Acts chapter 27 and Paul. Can you do that? Sure. Okay. Good, good, good. Alright, he says he can do it. We'll see what happens. All right, Acts chapter 27, and it's kind of a long chapter. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to kind of go through the story. When it was decided that we were to sail to Italy, they handed over Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion named Julius. Kind of like your brother. No, he's Julian. Anyway, of the Imperial Regiment. So when we had boarded a ship of a big name that I'm not going to try to pronounce. We put to sea, intending to sail to ports along the coast of the province of Asia. Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly. So he was kind to you. And allowed him to go to his friends to receive their care. When we had put out to sea from there, we sailed along the northern coast of Cyprus because the winds were against us. Okay, the winds were against you, okay? Uh, all right, so the winds were against him. All right. They kept sailing on, okay? It says, with yet more difficulty, difficulty we sailed along the coast and came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lycia. By now, much time had passed and the voyage was already dangerous. Since the fast was already over, Paul gave his advice and told them, Men, I can see that this voyage is headed toward damage and heavy loss, not only of the cargo and of the ship, but also of our lives. 
All right. So they were afraid they were going to die. This was, it was really, the wind was blowing hard. It was getting rough. But then, it says a gentle south wind sprung up. So it wasn't as bad. And, but, it started getting hot. All right. They thought they had achieved their purpose. They weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. But not long after, a fierce wind. Okay. A fierce wind called the Northeaster rushed down from the island. Since the ship was caught and was unable to head into the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. After running under the shelter of a little island called Cauda, we were barely able to get control of the ship. After hoisting it up, they used ropes and tackle and girded the ship. Then fearing they would run aground on the Sirtis, they lowered the drift anchor, and in this way they were driven along. So they were getting scared, okay? They were getting like majorly scared. They were worried about everything that was going on. This storm was going on. Some of the sailors were probably even getting sick. That didn't work. Didn't work, okay. But it was a rough trip, okay? For many days, neither sun nor stars appeared, and the severe storm kept ravaging. Finally, all hope that they would be saved was disappearing. Since many were going without food, Paul stood up among them and said, You men should have followed my advice not to sail from Crete and sustain this damage and loss. Alright? So it's still storming, but Paul's encouraging them the whole time. So, but it is, it's storming, it's raining, there's waves, everywhere all right but Paul says now I urge you to take courage because there will be no loss of any lives but only the ship for this night an angel of the God I belong to and serve stood me saying don't be afraid Paul you must stand before Caesar and look God has graciously given you all those who are sailing with you therefore take courage men because I believe God that it will be just the way it was told to me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Alright? So they kept going through the storm. They're afraid they're going to crash. And then the next thing he said, they started getting rid of all the stuff in the boat. So, they started throwing all the stuff overboard. So you need to start throwing the stuff overboard, Paul. All right, you got stuff to throw overboard. All right. Okay. So, when it was about daylight, Paul urged them to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you've been waiting and going without food. Therefore, I urge you to take some food. So they did. Now, wait till you hear this part. Since they all became encouraged and took food themselves. In all, there were 276 people on the, on the ship. Having eaten enough food, they began to lighten the ship by throwing the grain overboard into the sea. When daylight come, came, they did not recognize the land, but sighted a bay with a beach. They planned to run the ship ashore if they could. Now wait, we're going to skip ahead just a little bit. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners so that no one could swim off and escape. Now remember, Paul was a prisoner. But the centurion kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. So he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to follow, some on planks and some on debris from the ship. 
In this way, all got safely to the land. All right. Thank you, Paul. All right. I like when you said, is that the guy gets big? It was a little bit crazy. Wasn't that bold? Well, it was supposed to, uh, it's oatmeal, it's supposed to look like throw up. But anyway. I will pick up the boxes in a little bit. Thank you, Ethan, for being Paul. But here's, here's the deal. Even in the middle of that storm, Paul was encouraging people. And he told them about what God had told him. And it came true. So Paul, wherever he went, took the gospel and told people about God. All right? So I want to wrap up with one little illustration. All right. Can y'all tell me what this is? A light bulb, okay? In 1897, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. How did you know? I read it. Because he was there. All right. Now, we, we don't think about light bulbs very often, do we? Unless one goes out. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. But here's the deal. We forget how important they are. Like a few weeks ago, there's a light in our shower at home. And the light bulb went out. And it makes our shower darker. Okay? So, I had to replace the light bulb. But this little invention changed the way we live today. Do y'all remember when we've had a hurricane? Okay? And you don't have electricity. There's only so much you can do after it gets dark. You can get a flashlight. Yeah, you can get a flashlight. But light bulbs are important. But here's the deal. They changed the world. A light bulb did. You can be a world changer too. There's one last verse I want us to look at. All right. I do need Brooks. You wanted to come up, so Brooks, come here. All right. I want you to read a verse for me. Verse 14 there. You are the light of the world. A city situated, situated on a hill cannot be hidden. All right. It says you are the light of the world. And so, that means that you can be a world changer. You can light up this world by telling people about Jesus. Now, you may not go to every country in the world, but you may be able to tell people at your school about Jesus. You may be able to tell people in your neighborhood about Jesus. You may be able to tell people on your baseball or softball or soccer team or cheer team or dance class or whatever you do, you can still be a world changer. Okay? We're going to pray and then we're going to look at the big word real quick before we go to our rotations. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for these guys and girls and just pray that you would help us to know that we can be world changers by telling people about you. In Jesus' name, amen.